நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் ப்ராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் தமிழ் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி திஸ் இஸ் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் தீபா அண்ட் ஐ எம் ப்ரெசென்டிங் யூ த இங்கிலீஷ் வேர்ஷன் ஆஃப் த தமிழ் வீடியோ In my last video, I explained a lot about Mars. And in this video, I'm going to explain about effects of Mars in different houses for the native of Aries Ascendant. Now, let me begin with the Ascendant house Aries. When Mars resides in Aries, which is an Ascendant house, it is called Ruchaka Yoga. It is one of the Panja Maha Purusha Yoga. When a Panjabodha Tattva planet resides in any quadrant house such as 1st house or 4th house or 7th house or 10th house with its own house status or exaltation status, it is called Panja Maha Purusha Yoga. When Mars resides in the ascendant house itself which is Aries which is its own house which is quadrant house then it is considered to be ruchaka yoga please remember this is not raja yoga i have mentioned in my videos that panja maha purusha yoga is not raja yoga and i have explained the reasons in many of my videos a very famous astrologer while writing an article mentioned the term panja maha purusha raja yoga I telephoned the famous astrologer and I raised a question in which classical book Panja Maha Purusha Yoga was mentioned as Raja Yoga. Our discussion went on regarding that Maha Purusha is not a person who is equal to king. Maha Purusha indicates that he will be leading in the domain where he is. He will be Mahapurusha in the domain where he is and what he is doing. Purusha means man and Mahapurusha means a great man. The Panja Mahapurusha will let a native to lead in the domain where he exists. If a person has Raja Yoga as per the rules described by our sages and Maharishis, and the, when the native also has panja maha purusha yoga then this panja maha purusha yoga will help the person who will make all the preparations to become a great king a great leader the panja maha purusha yoga will act as a stepping stone for a person to become a great king or ruler I will definitely say that a person does not need Ruchaka Yoga or Sasa Yoga. In case if you see Ruchaka Yoga or Sasa Yoga in a person's natal chart, it is very much necessary to have some Subhatva. If only Saturn and Mars or Subhatva, then it is good for the life of the native. Then these can do benefits. What will happen when a native has Sasa Yoga in his natal chart? When Saturn resides in its own house or gets exalted in the quadrant house to the ascendant, thus attaining Sasa Yoga, then the native will take the professions which he will hesitate to express in the society. Like the person might have taken the profession such as building the drainage system, building lavatories or maintenance of toilet systems, the native's profession will be the ones that I explain now and he will be a leading person in that particular domain. The person will definitely not be a king. Another significance of Saturn is local government body. Therefore, the native can also become a municipal chairman, that is MC, who is actually responsible for checking whether the drainage system of the municipality is good or not. He is responsible for the department of constructing the drainage system and maintaining the roads. 
The municipality chairman is in charge of keeping the town clean. The maintenance and the cleanliness of the town are managed by the municipality, which is signified by Saturn. Try to understand the subtleties of astrology. Well, now let us come to the topic of Mars. Mars signifies security who guards the people. Mars is not a king. Mars is a commander. Mars is a soldier. If Mars is highly Pabatva, then it signifies the watchman. If Mars is Subatva, then it signifies major general of the army. A major general of a country can never become prime minister of India. An army leader or a security higher official can never become the prime minister of a country. If only you understand these subtleties, you will have a hold of astrology. If you read some old books and if you claim that there is Ruchaka Yoga, this native will become a king or an emperor, you will not definitely make good predictions. Mars has the ability only to become a commander. It cannot go beyond that. Sun is the king. Sun is the leader. You can see to the right of the king, there will be a minister, an old wise person who advises the king to make decisions which is signified by Jupiter. And to the left of the king in the royal court, you will see a person, a very young man who holds a sword, who holds a sword, who is in, in charge of security system of the country, a commander signified by Mars. Mars, which has good strength, will make the native a DGP or a major general. When Mars gets direct strength such as exaltation, it will not make the person prime minister or chief minister of the state. Sun is indeed the planet that can make a person prime minister or chief minister of the state. Sun which has got Subhatva will be able to make a person prime minister of the country or chief minister of the state. Jupiter will be in a state to advise the king, a minister. Mars signifies a commander who is obedient to the king, who has to oblige the words of the king, who is responsible for maintaining peace and security of the people, and who is in charge of curbing the violence when it happens. Mars signifies the army people, the policemen, uniformed servicemen who are in charge of maintaining the security of a place or safety of the place. I have written in my article Ungar Jadagam Yoga Jadagama that Mars is a person who guards the palace. It can never become the owner of the palace. It can never rule the palace. If only you understand the subtleties of the responsibilities given to each and every planet, you will be able to make good predictions of the natal chart. What will be the profession of a person? When you see Mars being exalted in one's natal chart, you cannot immediately predict that he will become a minister. When Mars resides in Leo, you cannot predict the person will become a leader in any domain. If a person becomes minister or head of a political party or head of any domain, then Sun is the significator of all these. Sun is the only star that can make all the planets revolve around it due to its gravity and it is a luminous body and it is the only planet that is responsible for the leadership of any domain. Mars is a person which is in the next level to the position of the sun which will wait for the orders 
commands from the sun, which will obey the orders of the sun, which will take care of the security of the people and executes the command of the sun. Do you know the reason why I insist on all these points? Because many people get confused with these points. Many of my subscribers have different questions regarding astrology and if you sum up all points that I teach you in each of the videos, definitely you will understand the subtleties of astrology. You will understand and you will be able to distinguish the character of the planets, the house effects of the planets, etc. So in this video regarding Mars, I will definitely touch Ruchaga Yoga often. When Mars resides in the Ascendant House itself, for the native of Aries Ascendant, it will deliver its effects in two ways. When Mars resides in the Ascendant House itself, it will give a very good physique and it will make the Ascendant strong. Mars is the 35-year-old muscular man Machos. When Mars resides in the Ascendant House itself, which signifies a very young man, how the native will be. The native will be a very angry person and in addition to this, if Mars is Pabatwa, he will be an extremely angry person. The native will not hesitate to hurt others physically and he will be a lover of weapons. The native will be the leader of violence. The native will be fond of using the weapons and will not hesitate to take the weapons and use them. If Mars is not strong in my chart, I will tremble if I have to hold a gun. If I have to handle a gun or bell hook, I will hesitate a lot. If Mars is strong in one's natal chart, sooner they see a gun, they will love to hold it and they love to shoot or use it. A tailor who holds scissors will definitely have a strong Mars in the natal chart. Based on the subatwa of Mars, the instruments that a person or the weapon a person holds will vary. When Mars is strong in the ascendant house itself, the native would love to hold a weapon even if at least not chopping the head of a person, he will love to chop a tree. If Mars is Pabatwa, then the native will use the very same weapon for a different application. I have written in my book Ungal Jadagam Yoga Jadagama about the difference in Subatwa and Pabatwa of Mars. Many of my readers have admired these concepts. Several comments on the blog and the videos are proof of the concepts that I have written. When Mars is very strong in one's natal chart, then the native will be a professional killer. When Mars is very strong in one's natal chart, the person will be able to admire the blood that oozes out of a cut that the native inflicted in a human body. If Mars has very direct strength, like residing in its own house or exalted, definitely the person will possess these characteristics. You don't need to even consider the concept of Pabatwa here. When Mars is exalted or in its own house gaining direct strength, the native will not be afraid of blood or to make harm physically. When Mars is in its own house status or gets exalted in a natal chart, the person will be a professional killer. The native will do all the criminal activities in the name of valor. The psychological tendency will be like he will be enjoying the moment by hurting a person and suffering of the person. This is what Mars will deliver when it gets direct strength or when it gets exalted or when it resides in its own house. When this very same Mars 
gets indirect strength that is when it is in connection with natural benefits such as jupiter or venus mars will give the tendency to save the person from a critical situation what will be the profession mars indicates a surgeon who will save the person from death the native will be a doctor who will not be afraid of the blood while operating a person and this mass energy will save a person these are the two different dimensions of subhatva and pabhatva of mars the concept of subhatva and pabhatva is the knowledge that almighty blessed me truly blessed this humble person there are three states of mars mars which is getting direct strength by being in its own house or getting exalted the second state is pabhatva and the third state is subhatva when mars has direct strength and pabhatva it will deliver a different effect these are the subtleties of astrological concepts and when you understand all these you can make perfect predictions what is the direct strength of mars when mars is exalted or in its own house with its very own nature natural way it will deliver an effect even when mars is exalted or in its own house status when it is in conjunction with saturn or rahu it is considered to be pabhatva when mars is in conjunction with amavasya moon or waning moon it is also considered to be pabhatva indeed mars and moon are mutual friends but when moon is in conjunction with mars and if it has to deliver benefits moon must have its own light energy if moon is amavasya and it is in conjunction with mars then it will deliver certain pabhatva the very same mars when it is exalted or in its own house but as the connection of natural benefits such as jupiter or venus it will deliver immense benefits try to understand the fundamentals very strongly that i explained now then you can make the best predictions you can pinpoint what mars is exactly going to deliver to the native it is out of my experience of thousands of natal charts and by the blessings of almighty i acquired this knowledge and i'm sharing it with you even if not a thousand natal charts you can identify from hundreds of charts that you check every day or even 10 to 20 natal charts or enough to find the truth of the astrological concepts that i explained now therefore this is the effect of mars which has got direct strength i explained all these because in my forthcoming videos i'm going to explain the effects of mars in 12 houses for more ascendants and you have to check whether mars is subhatva or pabhatva or it has got direct strength so there are three categories of mars one mars which has got direct strength second mars which has got direct strength with pabhatva third one mars that has got strength with subhatva if in one's natal chart mars has got direct strength the native will do activities which are related to crime in the name of the valor these activities were once identified as a sign of a brave man in the olden era by all dictums in those days there was no proper law system you can find a young person 
who carries a sword or a bell hook who ensures the safety of a family or a crowd of people traveling from one place to another for business or pilgrimage etc there might be a group of merchants or traders who travel by cart among where you can find a young person carrying some weapons the group of traders or the business people will take along with them a lot of precious things lots of money and there will be certain young guards who will lead them and certain young people will follow the trails of the merchants to safeguard them and their money they always expect a pack of thieves who can attack them for stealing the money or valuable things from them the pack of thieves are signified by planet saturn and the people who save the merchant and their properties from the thieves are signified by mars there will be a fight between the people who secure the tradesmen signified by mars and thieves signified by saturn the people who secure these merchants their belongings or the crowd of people will not hesitate to attack the thieves or even kill the thieves and go ahead with their journey there will be no one to question these young men who secure the business people or even the entire family or a group of people in those days there was no law system the young man will defend a group of thieves came to attack my family my wife my children or some people in my family and to protect my family members and relatives i attack the thieves there will be nobody to question this act on the contrary to that in today's world where the law system is vigorously enforced no one can take the law in their own hands even if a man attacks or misbehaves with the wife of a person and consequently the husband kills or attacks the culprit then the husband will be punished by the law it is considered a crime even if the husband kills the person who attacks his wife or misbehaves with his wife because the current law system vigorously enforces that one should not take the law in their own hands and one has no right to punish the culprits rather to surrender the culprit in the police station and leave the decision to the court there will be severe punishment even for a husband who kills a person who misbehaved with his wife there will be certainly an interrogation he has to face from the police department if the husband kills a person who misbehaves with his wife this is how the current law system works this is the place where many people misunderstand the significance of mars since we have to perceive the character of the planet as good or bad based on the current trends and not as said in the original dictums i have not explained these for other planets only for mars and saturn i'm giving a lot of explanations because these are misunderstood by many astrologers i have observed many subtleties in the karaka of mars that is significance of mars and i have explained all of this if mars is very strong in one's natal chart the native will love to punish others the native will be very rude the native in whose natal chart mars is strong will love to punish others the person will be very hard hearted and you cannot expect any mercy from them not even an ounce of mercy you cannot expect an ounce of grace from the native in whose natal chart mars has got direct strength at his thanabala in addition to this merciless character when mars is pabatwa the native becomes the saddest when a person does a crime 
even when the victim is begging with tears and pain then you can definitely see mass is highly pavatwa i hope you understand what i mean to say or i will try to say this very openly there are many unimaginable harms done to women despite their pleading or begging for mercy those men who torment a woman physically or mentally will have a pabatwa mars in their natal chart in those natal charts who behave like a psycho you will find the combination of mars with direct strength plus a malafic like rahu or saturn one has to be very careful where mars resides in the ascendant house and it is in connection with malafics such as rahu or saturn and when the major planetary period of mars or any planet in connection with mars happens these are the areas where there will be some confusion in the predictions well when mars resides in the ascendant house it will make a person very strong physically the person who are much interested in doing workouts or signified by mars these natives will be very much interested in doing workouts and they will love to keep their body fit and healthy the reason for one's fitness of body is mars and if somebody is going regularly to gym tries to maintain the body fit and healthy it is signified by mars when mars is connected to 10th house the native will be interested in the medical field sports field authority etc sports is a field which comprises physical fitness as well therefore when mars is connected to the ascendant the native will try to maintain the body fit mars is the planet that signifies a man of almost 35 years of age who is muscular and fit Mars does not signify any woman because Mars is the male planet. Mars is the planet that signifies a man who is not afraid of anything and has guts to do any adventure. Having said all these when Mars is connected to the ascendant it definitely needs to be Subhatwa. You might ask a question if Mars is very strong in the ascendant house what is the prediction when mars resides in its own house which is aries in the ascendant house the person will be impulsive and have a lot of courage to face anything i have told a lot of negative points and it is time to tell some positive points as well about mars this person will have extreme courage they will be like do or die they will not hesitate to face any fights confront any fights in those natal charts where mars resides in aries in the ascendant house the person will show his force physically rather than making verbal agreements the person will not hesitate to use weapon that they hold during a fight all these activities can be expected from the native of aries ascendant whose mars resides in aries itself or when mars gets exalted what is the reason because aries itself is a masculine sign and a fiery sign aries is a masculine and fiery sign and it can reflect the complete nature of mars therefore when mars is residing in aries without any influence of other planets that is conjunction or aspect of other planets the native will be extremely courageous this extreme courageousness will become a plus point in many situations and a drawback in few situations have you heard about a proverb that reads the first attack is the best defense because the opponent will be completely paralyzed 
by the first attack. The opponent will be confused about what will happen next to him. Mars will also give a sort of foolhardy nature. They are an extremely active person, very courageous and very valorous. If you want to punish the native of Aries Ascendant, whose Mars resides in Aries, you can tell them to stand in a place without any action, without moving at all. The person will be extremely upset because it is something that they cannot do at all. When Mars has a connection with the Ascendant house, the native will be extremely active and vibrant. They will not sit in one place and they will be always moving. This will definitely happen when Ascendant Lord Mars resides in Aries itself. What will happen when same Mars is Pabatwa in the Ascendant house itself? No one can approach these natives because they are extremely angry people. You might have seen certain people who speak a lot of swear words. The Ascendant house signifies the mind, thought and the conduct of the native. When the Ascendant Lord Mars resides in the Ascendant house, in a state of Pabatwa, the native will not hesitate to use the swear words to hurt others. Though the second house is meant for speech, when the Ascendant house is in connection with Mars, Saturn and Rahu, these people will have their mental status affected. These natives will not know the knack of speaking with others gently. If Mars is Subhatva while residing in the Ascendant house, it is good. When Mars is Subhatva, it delivers both good physique and good mind. When Mars is Pabhatva, it will not deliver any great benefit. Now, let me explain the effect of Mars in the second house for the native of Aries Ascendant. The second house is owned by Venus. When Mars resides in the second house, for the native of Aries Ascendant, it is good. What is the reason? Because it resides in the house of Venus. It basically gets Subhatva. In addition to this, if Venus is in conjunction, then it is auspicious. When Mars resides in the house of Jupiter or Venus or a lone Mercury or waxing moon, it gets Subhatva. Based on this concept, when Mars resides in the second house, that is in Taurus, it will deliver benefits. Certain astrologers mispredict that when Mars resides in the second house, they treat it like Manglik Dosha. Please don't believe in all these sort of stories. Please don't follow such predictions. There is no dosha that exists like Manglik dosha. It is a dosha that affects one among 10 lakh people or one among 10,000 people or 10 lakh people. Many of the astrologers insist on the point merely to get profit from parihara or remedies suggested to the clients. This is the truth indeed. When Mars resides in the second house, which is the house of Jupiter or Venus, it will not do any harm at all. Mars is the planet that is 75% malefic. Of course, it is the planet which affects where it resides. It resides in the second house, which signifies wealth, speech and family. However, Mars is Subhatva when it is residing in the house of Venus. So you have to check when Mars resides in second house, it has got Subhatva or Pabhatva. Having said this, when Mars resides in the second house, that is in Taurus, whose house lord is Venus, it gains Subhatva and it will not do any worse effects. 
When Mars resides in second house that is Taurus in conjunction with natural benefits such as Jupiter or Venus it is an added benefit Native is going to shine in medicine sports authority related positions infrastructure domains related to fire and engineering Mars will the, give the best in all these domains Therefore when Mars resides in the second house which is Taurus it is good Whenever I say it is good for Mars you should make sure that it has not got the connection of natural malefic such as rahu or saturn if mars is in conjunction with saturn or rahu then all the good effects that i explain now will not be delivered by mars if saturn aspects mars or when saturn is in conjunction with mars or when mars is in conjunction with rahu mars will not deliver any benefits it will deliver worse effects if mars is in conjunction with ketu it attains sukshma strength when mars is in conjunction with ketu ketu will not affect mars at all ketu will make mars to behave more thoughtfully i have already explained a lot about how mars will behave when it is in conjunction with ketu attaining sukshma strength Recently in one of my premium videos I explained even with natal charts Having said all these when Mars resides in the second house it is considered to be good What will happen when Mars resides in the third house which is Gemini Many might question whether the third house is good for malefic planets In general when malefic planet reside in upajaya sthana such as 3rd house 6th house 10th house or 11th house it is considered to be good Please do not apply this point to the natal of Aries ascendant What is the reason Because when Mars resides in the 3rd house Gemini or in the 6th house Virgo it resides in the house whose house lord is Mercury which is a dead enemy to Mars When Mars resides in Gemini as per Bhavat Bhavam Mars will reside in the 8th house from its 8th house Scorpio and it will be in the 3rd house from the ascendant house The ascendant lord should not be in the 8th house to the 8th house Scorpio and in 3rd house to the ascendant house which is Aries that too in Mercury's house For the native of Aries ascendant and Scorpio ascendant whose house lord is Mars Mercury is a dead enemy The planets that reside in Mercury's house will not deliver benefits for the native of Aries ascendant and Scorpio ascendant However when dispositor that is lord of house Mercury gets exalted then everything will be under control However when Mars resides in the 3rd house it will not deliver very bad effects because I have reiterated a point that Mars should not be exalted or in its own house status Therefore when Mars resides in the 3rd house it will deliver benefits to a certain extent If Mars is not Pabatva it will deliver certain benefits and when it is Subatva it will deliver added benefits Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the 4th house Cancer where it gets debilitated. There are no bad effects because of this planetary position of Mars where it gets debilitated. For the native of Aries ascendant when Mars resides in the 4th house it loses its digbala and it is debilitated. In regard to delivery of house effects Mars will not be able to deliver the house effects of the ascendant house. If it is a female chart and when Mars is debilitated, I will say it is good. Suppose a girl is born as a native of Aries ascendant, 
or Scorpio ascendant and Mars is debilitated, then the girl is very, very fortunate. I found this to be true after researching thousands of natal charts of the girls. A girl is graceful in her life when Mars gets debilitated and this is considered to be good. It will take time and experience to understand few advantages of a planet when it is debilitated. Mars should lose the direct strength in the natal chart of a female. If the native is born as Scorpio ascendant and Mars is debilitated, she will be a multimillionaire or she will be a wife of a multimillionaire. If a girl is born as Aries ascendant or Scorpio ascendant and Mars is in its own house or exalted, then the girl is very obstinate and she will behave like a rowdy. This girl will act like a man and will not even hesitate to pick a physical fight with a man. In the natal chart of a girl, Mars, which reflects a lot of masculine character, should not be strong. And in the natal chart of a man, the female planets should not be very strong. There are more untold subtleties in the concepts of astrology behind every concept that is expressed. In other words, there are untold secrets behind the told concepts of astrology. There are lot of concepts that will complement each other in astrology. If in a girl's natal chart, the masculine planet is not supposed to be strong, then in the natal chart of a boy, the feminine planet is not supposed to be strong. You might raise a question like if Venus is not strong in a man's chart, what will happen? Then there are many exceptions for every concept explained. There are rules and always there are some exceptions. Well, let us come back to the point. When Mars resides in the fourth house to the ascendant house where it gets debilitated, there will be some problems in delivering its house effects. There will be some shortcomings in delivering the house effects of the ascendant house since ascendant lord is debilitated. What will be the antidote for this? Let us say Mars gets debilitated in Cancer and Jupiter aspects the ascendant, then it will be an antidote. Let me repeat the points on how to make predictions. Let us imagine the situation where the ascendant lord is debilitated. How will you gauge the strength of the ascendant then? There are always three factors that you have to check in in order to gauge the strength of the ascendant. Sun is the natural significator of the ascendant. There are three things that you have to always consider in order to make predictions. The first one is the natural significator of the ascendant which is sun. The second one ascendant lord in one's natal chart. Then comes the ascendant house. If two among three are good, it is enough. In the natal chart of a native of Aries ascendant, Mars is debilitated in Cancer. Still, the person lives a good life. How is it possible? Definitely, you will find my rule working there. The ascendant law definitely will have been aspected by a benefic. The two factors can compensate for the debilitation of the Ascendant Lord. The natural significator of the Ascendant, that is Sun, must be strong. Even if the Ascendant Lord is totally debilitated, yet Sun is very strong, then it will compensate for the debilitation status of the Ascendant Lord. 
because sun is the significator of the ascendant sun is the natural significator of the ascendant jupiter is the natural significator of the second house mars is the natural significator of the third house the moon and venus are the natural significators of the fourth house when natural significator of the ascendant sun is strong or when ascendant is aspected by a natural benefic it will compensate for the loss of sthana bala of the ascendant lord there are actually four factors that you have to consider in astrology and we are giving 40 marks and each thus sums up to 120 marks for your understanding i made it bit simpler so i have rounded it as 100 marks and here you have to consider only three factors divide 100 points by 3 where you get 33 marks each the strength of the ascendant is 33 marks the strength of the ascendant lord is 33 marks the natural significator of the ascendant is 33 marks if you add all these you will get 100 marks therefore to gauge the strength of the ascendant you have to consider these three factors and if any two of the points out of 3 are good it is considered to be good it means the native lives a good life this is the way you have to predict in vedic astrology for the native of aries ascendant let us say mars got debilitated then the native loses 33.3 marks the house effect of the ascendant house will be spoiled there will be some negative effects when a planet gets debilitated what does it mean when the ascendant house lord is spoiled it means your mind and your body are not in good status based on the house effects we make this prediction when mars is debilitated it says that your body and your mind are not in good status in addition to this let us say that saturn resides in the ascendant house itself then ascendant is spoiled more in case jupiter aspects from the ninth house then the ascendant will regain 33.3 marks if sun is very strong with directional strength or if sun has a connection of a benefic or if it has combusted venus then the native will regain 33.3 marks this is how you have to calculate the strength of the ascendant If you apply the very same logic for every bhava in your natal chart then you can explore why you're not getting certain benefits in your life and possible reasons for such shortcomings For every house you have to check the lord of the house the significator of the house and the house itself Therefore you have to check three points The first one is the house the second one is the lord of the house and the third point is natural significator of the house In Vedic astrology we gauge the strength of the bhava by classifying into four categories and giving 40 points each When we sum up the total points will be 120 points When all the points are fulfilled then you will get 120 points. I'm simplifying it by 100 points. Therefore for the native of Aries ascendant when the house is in good status you get 33.3 marks when ascendant lord Mars is in good status then it scores 33.3 marks and when sun which is the natural significator of the ascendant is in good status then it scores 33.3 marks so totally it sums up to 100 marks even when the ascendant lord is spoiled and the other two conditions are met 
or the other two points are fulfilled then it is good when will these bad effects be delivered to the native when the ascendant lord is spoiled then during the major planetary period of mars here which is the ascendant lord it will spoil the mind and the health of the native to identify whether the native will escape from the bad effects delivered by debilitated mars or pabatva mars you have to check whether the ascendant has got any connection with the natural benefits or you can find whether the native can escape from these bad effects based on the strength of the sun this is how you have to make predictions this is the subtlest concept of vedic astrology and this is not explained in detail by any original dictum these are certain secrets that almighty have permitted me to explore and i'm sharing all those untold secrets with you if you understand all these you can predict the bhava easily in this live explanation one of my subscribers has asked me a question how to gauge the strength of aspect of mars you know it cannot be explained in few minutes we can go on explaining the concepts of astrology for lifetime maybe i can help in a way after explaining the effects of different planets for 12 ascendants and towards the end of the series you can remind me about this that is when i finish explaining the effects of ketu for all the 12 different ascendants please remind me how to gauge the strength of the aspect of different planets i can start a new series explaining about aspects of the planets please remind me how to gauge the strength of the aspect of planets such as moon sun mars etc this video is totally dedicated to explain the effects of planets in different houses let us dedicate separate videos to explain how to gauge the strength of the aspect of planets first of all let us understand different simple fragments individually and put them together in order to make a final prediction i'm explaining to you the points the way i learned astrology all the original dictums have gone into my mind as different threads of concepts and i'm weaving it as a holistic thread and sharing it with you definitely i will publish a video in order to explain the aspects of the planets i have explained a lot about digbala in my videos but i have not explained much about drigbala in my videos i understand this point very well i mean your request and i will explain the effects of the aspects of the planets in separate videos now let me explain the effects of mars in the 5th house which is leo the ascendant lord is 75% malefic and 25% benefic and it resides in the 5th house that is a planet which is 75% malefic is residing in the 5th house though mars should not reside in the 5th house since it has a great understanding with leo house if sun is in conjunction with mars or when sun and mars are in parivartan between aries house and leo house it will deliver great benefits when mars resides in the 5th house in rashi it is good even in navamsha when mars resides in leo house it is good this will deliver more qualities of mars to the native when mars resides in leo it gets least subhatva therefore when mars resides in 5th house leo it delivers great benefits there are three planets that have great understanding with the house of leo such as jupiter mars and mercury i have explained about this already in many of my videos i don't want to repeat those points here 
to sum up when mars resides in fifth house it is considered to be good now let me explain the effect of mars in sixth house in virgo there is only one point that needs to be explained it is good when a malefic planet resides in the sixth house or eighth house or twelfth house to the ascendant even when mars resides in the sixth house that is in virgo it will aspect its ascendant house by eighth aspect and it establishes the connection with the ascendant house well why should we say that malefic planets should be in sixth or eighth or twelfth house from its own house the arrogant nature of the malefic planets will be lost when it resides in sixth house or eighth house or twelfth house to its own house when mars connects with ascendant house it means the native is an angry person but here when mars resides in sixth house the native will not be very impulsive person rather he will express anger only in certain situations because mars resides in the sixth house to its ascendant house aries you know this house is not a friendly house to mars the third house and sixth house are owned by mercury which is a dead enemy to mars however when mars resides in virgo it will get connected to the ascendant house by its eighth aspect mars will aspect its own house by its eighth aspect you would have come across many points regarding the eighth aspect of mars but the eighth aspect of mars has only 25 percent strength while the seventh aspect of all the planets has 100 points the special aspect of the planets have different points in this regard the eighth aspect of mars has only 25 percent strength since the eighth aspect of mars has 25 percent strength when it resides in virgo it strengthens its own house and what is the benefit of this position the impulsive nature of mars the arrogant nature of mars and the fighting spirit of mars will be absent in this native therefore when mars resides in the sixth house to its own house aries it is good now let me explain the effect of mars in seventh house which is libra it is good when mars resides in libra which aspects its own house but here venus needs to be strong if venus is debilitated and mars resides in libra it will not deliver benefits if venus is residing in another house or when it is exalted or when it is in conjunction with mars it is considered to be good it is considered to be very auspicious because mars aspects its own house from the house of a natural benefic it resides in the house of the second most natural benefic what sort of character will this mars deliver the native will get angry and will fight reasonably when mars resides in libra the native the native will be a sincere and honest person who will fight for good reasons the native might be an angry person but his anger will have a very valid reason the native himself will be a good person and he will also expect others to behave honestly where the mars will reflect the character of the libra therefore when mars resides in libra it is considered to be very auspicious and it will deliver immense benefits now let me explain the effects of mars in the 8th house which is scorpio when mars resides in 8th house we cannot call ruchika yoga if only mars resides in a quadrant house with its own house status then it is said to be ruchika yoga when mars resides in the 8th house to its own house aries it is good to a certain extent 
because I have already said that the malefic planet should be in 6th house or 8th house or 12th house to its own house. It will do the house effects of the ascendant to a certain extent because it is after all the ascendant lord and it is very strong in Scorpio with its own house status. When Mars resides in Scorpio it is good when it is not Pabatva because it will affect longevity. When Mars resides in 8th house which is Scorpio without Pabatva it is good and when it is Subatva it will deliver more benefits. Of course Mars can reside in the 8th house but Mars should not reside in the star of Ketai that is Jeshta. When you are making predictions you should also consider the star lord. There are three stars that are present in Scorpio and one among them is Kete that is Jeshta. The stars that are not good for Mars to reside in are Aelium, Kete and Revati that is Ashlesha, Jeshta and Revati. What is the reason? The star lord of all the three stars is Mercury, which is the sixth house lord for the native of Aries ascendant. In case Mars resides in the nakshatra Vishaka, it is good. It escaped the shortcomings. It means the native lives well. In case Mars resides in Ketai, that is Jeshta nakshatra, its lord is Mercury, which is sixth house lord. So Mars will deliver the sixth house effects. This is one of the most controversial subject that I am going to teach you soon. I am going to explain when the nakshatra will deliver its effects. While many people believe that only nakshatra delivers all the effects, I make predictions based on house effects and karaka of the planet in many places without touching nakshatras. And my predictions are always 100% correct. Only in certain places I make predictions based on nakshatras. For example, I considered nakshatra of Mars only in the 8th house here. So it is very important to know where you have to take into account nakshatra of the planet and where to make predictions based on the house effects and Karaka of the planet. There will be a huge confusion regarding this for you. Definitely I will explain all those in my forthcoming videos. Please don't worry. I will publish all the videos not as premium videos but as general videos on YouTube. Therefore the 8th house is good to a certain extent not really bad. Saturn or Rahu should not be in connection with Mars. If Saturn is in conjunction with Mars, it will affect longevity. Because Mars, when residing in Scorpio, it will aspect the second house. Though it is an ascendant lord, the aspect of Mars, especially which is seventh aspect, has hundred percent strength. This will affect the second house. In this case, Mars will not definitely function as an ascendant lord. Because here Mars will function as 8th house lord and it aspects the second house. It will also aspect the third bhava. When Mars aspects the second and third bhava, it will definitely spoil the courage of the native. When it aspects the second house, it will affect the wealth of a person. So Mars here will definitely spoil the wealth, family and speech of the native. So this native will talk as he wishes with no forethought at all. And imagine how the family will be for such a native. Imagine the situation. Therefore, when Mars resides in 8th house to its own house, it is good in two ways. The first one is when Ascendant Lord, which is Malafic, resides in 8th house to its own house, 
it is good the second point is that it is good for longevity and it is not considered to be good since it will aspect the second house which affects family wealth speech of the native let me explain the effects of mars in the ninth house mars which is 75% malefic is not supposed to reside in the trine house that is ninth house when mars resides in fifth house it has a certain level of understanding with leo house when it resides in the ninth house it resides in the house which is highly subhatva the lord of the first house is in the ninth house however mars is a malefic it is good since it is residing in the house of jupiter well you might ask me whether it is good or not if mars resides in the ninth house it will definitely affect the luck factor however while mars resides in the house of jupiter it is good if mars has connection of jupiter then it attains guru mangal yoga when it has an aspect of jupiter or conjunction of jupiter there will be definitely guru mangal yoga when mars resides in the house of sagittarius what will happen this house will subdue the anger of mars and it will calm down mars therefore when mars resides in the ninth house since it is the house of jupiter it is good however since malefic resides in the ninth house it will deliver certain worse effects and definitely this will be bearable by the native this is really important you might ask me a question when mars resides in the ninth house will it affect the status of the father yes of course it will affect the status of the father a malefic should not reside in the ninth house it will reduce definitely the status of the father only the natural benefics should reside in the trine house and not the malefics what will happen when mars resides in the ninth house the father will not have a great rapport with the native or the native will not earn a good name on his behalf for the family and more importantly the native will have great challenges in getting the properties of the father the native might not get the support of the father if only leo and ninth house are strong you can directly enjoy the properties of the father now let me explain the effects of mars in the house of capricorn mars gets exalted in capricorn and it also attains directional strength for the native of aries ascendant here mars will attain complete ruchaka yoga you see mars gets exalted in the 10th house so what will be the profession the native will work in the domain of uniformed services such as police department army etc this native will be such a hard hearted person the native will find pleasure in shooting down others the native will behave like a sadist who will beat others and punish others if mars is pabatwa definitely the native will behave so for example when there is a combination of mars and saturn the native will definitely be a sadist let us say saturn resides in scorpio and aspects capricorn where mars gets exalted the native will be a complete 100% sadist there are certain people who love or find immense pleasure watching others crying or there are certain extreme sadists who finds great pleasure in mishandling the women hope you understand what i come to say pabatwa mars will definitely deliver these characteristics here mars gets both sthanabala and directional strength that is digvala 
and when it is parbatva definitely the native will be a sadist in case of mars attains subatva by aspect or conjunction of venus or even with debilitated jupiter over there then all these characteristics will completely differ if mars is highly subatva the native will definitely be working in the medical field when mars is connected with 10th house and when it has got subatva that is when it is in connection with subatva moon that is the moon which has got lot of light energy or venus or jupiter then definitely the native will be working in the medical field based on subatva of mars the person will work in different domains of medical field for the first level of subatva in the medical field the native will work as a doctor the second level of position in the medical field or a uh, dentist physiotherapy etc then comes the third level of jamain in the medical field which is homeopathy siddha medicine etc and the fourth level of subatva will deliver the domain such as engineering for the native of aries ascendant when mars resides in the 10th house it gets both sthana bala and digbala when a malafic gains both sthana bala and digbala it is not considered to be good because from the house of capricorn it will aspect the ascendant house by its fourth aspect the native will be an extremely angry person when mars gets digbala and sthana bala together in the 10th house it is not good since it aspects the ascendant house with great strength this will make the native to be an extremely angry person the native will completely reflect the characteristics of mars when mars becomes subatva here then the effects will be completely different the native will lead in a real estate construction medicine etc if mars is subatva then the native can shine in these fields based on the strength of the subatva the domain will be different and the benefits delivered will be different if mars gets extremely subatva then definitely the native will be working as a doctor if it is second level of subatva the native will be working as a dentist or a physiotherapist then comes the construction field well how to identify whether the native works as a doctor or in construction field for this you have to connect mars with panjabhuta tatva water land or fire etc please also check from which house jupiter aspects or whether mars is in conjunction with venus or whether venus aspects mars check whether the planets reside in earthy house or watery house or fiery house based on these you have to predict the profession of the native i have already explained how to identify i believe in the video of jupiter and saturn connection i have mentioned in that video that while jupiter and saturn gets connected we can identify whether the native works in crushers or working in professions like in bars etc in the same way you also have to check in which houses these planets reside whether it is earthy house or watery house or fiery house definitely you can find the occupation of the native from the connection of mars with the other planets i will definitely explain these in a separate video now let me explain the effects of mars in the 11th house when a malafic resides in the 11th house it is good in a certain way when a malafic resides in the 3rd house or 6th house or 11th house it is considered to be good when mars resides in the 11th house it resides in the house of saturn which is aquarius 
If the dispositor, that is house rod satin, is very strong, definitely it will not deliver very worse effects. Mars is not delivering such worse effects when it resides in the 11th house. Now let me explain the effect of Mars in the 12th house. It is a good position for Mars. When Mars resides in the 12th house to the ascendant house, it is considered to be good. As I always say, when a malefic resides in 6th house or 8th house or 12th house from the ascendant house, it is considered to be good. When Mars resides in 12th house, it resides in Pisces, which is the house of Jupiter, which helps to subdue the bad characteristics of Mars, such as anger, impulsive nature, foolhardy nature. All these bad characteristics will be definitely missing in the native when Mars resides in the house of Jupiter. Usually people say that the ascendant lord should not be in the 6th house or 8th house or 12th house. But what I am saying is contrary to that. Did you notice? I will definitely say when Mars resides in 12th house to the ascendant house, it is very good. The native will be a person who will definitely have some forethought when his ascendant Lord Mars resides in the house of Jupiter in the 12th house to the ascendant house than in the ascendant house itself. The person will definitely have the thinking capability. Definitely native will not be arrogant. The native will not repent after doing an action. A bad action. Rather he will definitely contemplate before executing an action. When Mars resides in the house of Jupiter, what will happen? The 75% malefic character of the Mars will vanish and the natal will shine with 25% good characteristics of Mars. Therefore, when Mars resides in the 12th house to its own house, Aries, it is good. Since Mars resides in Pisces, which is the house of Jupiter, which is a natural benefic, it is considered to be good. Hope you got the point. Well, in my next video, I'm going to explain the effects of Mars in 12 different houses for the native of Taurus Ascendant. Well, this is question time. For the native of Aries Ascendant, when Mars is strong in natal chart, how the native will behave? Option A, impulsive. Option B, kind. Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. In the description box, we have added the playlist link of all the English videos so far published. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Keep writing your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.